Hello, my name's Mike M0MSN, and in my last video, you saw me building the frame and uh, stringing, if that's the right word for it, the wire on this uh, for the, uh, the wired frame uh, loop antenna. So in this video, uh, I'm going to be putting the coupling loop on our spiral antenna, and also um, putting the capacitor on it. And at the end of the, uh, we'll test it and see if it all works and see if we can make a contact. Okay, so we've got our loop and uh, we're nice little ends on the end and uh, nicely, neatly done. I'll uh, work out how much wire has been used. But this is for the 80 meter band. We've got our loop. And the next thing we need to do is create our coupling loop. So, uh, right, let's, uh, let's get on. Now the idea is we'll put our strip connector in this bit here, pointing this way. Um, we will use some small lengths of um, string off these top hose to hold the, um, the coupling loop, basically five centimeters from this wire, perpendicular or parallel, all the way up to our five centimeter hole here and it will come down the other side and then we'll use some more string off of this to hold it at five centimeters and it will be five centimeters from the center of this um, strut up as well which happens to be roughly where this uh, hole is from from here um, maybe closer to a four and a half but five it's close enough um, and we'll then have our coupling loop um, which will be a, a triangle and the top and at the bottom we will create our um, capacitor and uh, that's what we'll do after we've done the the loop right i've tied a bit of string as you can see around the uh, oh it's through the hole actually so if we look at it from the other side there's no string <laughs> So I put some string through the hoe uh, and tied it off, as you can see, a bit of loose, uh, it's about um, uh, 15 centimetres long. And I've done exactly the same on this side. I haven't cut the access off yet, but I will do. So 15 centimetres of string, ordinary nylon. Um, and now what I'm going to do is glue the strip connector in the centrepiece. Now there's a hole there, as you can see, so I could put a screw through it to make sure that it's actually um, definitely kept in that position but I want to reduce the amount of metal so I'll, I'll just use uh, glue for now and if I need a screw I shall uh, put one in later. This is the uh, the strip connector uh, that you can buy it's called uh, well, it's called strip connector or chocker block I don't know what it's called in the states but uh, in the UK it's called uh, strip connector and it's my intention to to glue that one there, and as you can see, it's just about in the right alignment for that hole, so I could just screw it on, but I'll glue it for now. This is super glue, okay? And I'm gonna to try to use that to uh, to stick this on. I don't know if it's gonna work. Gosh, I can't even get to, can't even get the filming in there. Difficult this. Things I do for love. For the love of my sport, look how much glue I've used. My goodness. Shed loads of super glue. And the idea is that uh, I can use a catalyst to uh, set it off, make it all nice and hard. You'll see it now. Going off. And hopefully, yeah, pretty good. Okay, cool. Okay. Side. 
And then back into the middle. Change, uh, change of plans. We have decided to uh, put the strip connector on vertically, because obviously it'll make it easier to connect the coax cable below it. Um, and also, yeah, it's easier to lay it out. Okay. So let's put some hot melt glue around that and uh, hold it in place and uh, we'll strip it back, connect it up and put some coax on it and we'll see where we stand. I also need to make the capacitor still, don't I? So we've uh, bared back a little bit of the, of the uh, shielding, shielding of the uh, PVC coating on the wire. As you can see, that's the, the inner or the coupling loop. Uh, so I've bared back some of the wire. I've put some heat shrink, uh, glue backed heat shrink on the top of it to uh, hold it in place. Bared back the wire. Ooh, fourth time I've said that. Just going to tin them now so that I can put it inside of our strip connector. Um, and then that will be the loop pretty much finished. Just need to attach the coax to the bottom. And uh, we should be uh, ready to go with that side of it. And then we have to connect our capacitor, which I'm yet to build on the bottom for tuning. Uh, so here's the little capacitor that I have just built. Um, I'm yet to test uh, how many picofarads it is, um, but these plates are closer together than in the larger one. Um, so I'm just about to get the meter out and uh, we will see how many picofarads we are. Uh, or fads we are talking about here. Oh, here's our capacitor. Four blades, four plates, four systems, four sections. 25.54 picofarads. Okay, just need to uh, cut this off now. And uh, I think that's cool. What's the minimum? Okay, 5.3 beaker for ads. Excellent stuff. Okay, I think this is possibly ready to go on to the, uh, onto the wire wound loop. We can, uh, we can attach it now and see if it works. So here's the idea. That's why there was a slot so that the wire could pass through it. And uh, what we do now is we'll uh, we'll drill a small hole uh, in the capacitor uh, case here, and perhaps the same slightly above, and we'll screw into the uh, to the pipe, and we'll also glue it. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll bare back our cables, put some uh, some fork connectors on, and then connect it up to our uh, to our capacitor. And after doing that, we'll connect up some coax to our uh, to our top uh, induction loop, and uh, we'll put it out and see what kind of SWR we get. Our capacitors on our loop. Next.
Excellent. Okay, so we've got an SWR of 1.6, which isn't brilliant, but it's not bad. And uh, if we just look at the, the cat. Hello, cat. You can see how it's all working. We could probably get a better uh, SWR if we decoupled this slightly. I think this uh, this loop could probably be a little bit smaller. Um, but the SWR changes. Let's see if I can get this in a, in a decent place for you one moment. Let's see if I can get all of this in the picture at once. Okay, let me explain um, what we've got then. Okay, I'm going through the uh, the tuner, but it's not actually using the tuner. And I apologise for the uh, for the amazing stability of the camera here, but uh, I am trying my hardest to make it all uh, work well, but I can't really make it work. Okay, so number two. Okay, the NFED half wave. Number one is the DX Commander and Bypass is this cable here, which is going to our wonderful wire loop. Now, we're on our Kenwood TS890. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll uh, Okay, what we're on we're on the bypass at the moment which is the wire loop in the house okay, sitting yeah, well, literally the behind yeah, me on this. tuned for this area call. but not specifically for this frequency uh, but, uh, for now, we're, uh, we're so as a receive uh, loop yeah, as you can see it's working uh, and, uh, really well yeah, now, if I go uh, to the DX the commander, working the concept with, the, with their uh, special call, is it? Yeah, well, I've, uh, I've worked. So the DX commander, as you can five, see, is much brighter eight, signal. Um, uh, with a lot more uh, uh, receive but, uh, capability, but uh, you know what? Still working. Uh, uh, NFED half wave. And for half wave, as you can see, it's but, uh, still um, plus plus twenty up to plus twenty or well, plus ten. So let's go back to the indoor loop. Still just nine plus. Right, let's see if we can find something a little bit more in the in the, in the uh, back of the box. Mexico, Italy, Chilliwack, Echo. And I'm on the Atlantic or the west coast of Ireland. Hotel Bravo 3, Sierra. Echo, Italy, Charlie Limo. Enfield Half-Life. Okay, let's find some of those. Enfield Halfway, DX Commander, Indoor Spiral. It works. It actually works. Okay, let's turn the power down. And uh, I'll have to go to AM, I think, for this. And uh, let's go off the frequency so that uh, 
not trampling on anybody's feet. Actually, let's try CW because uh, I think it might be uh, narrower. Let's turn the volume down. Okay. Just quickly put a quick tune out. Yeah, the SWR is quite high there. Let's see if I can just bring it in. There we go. So I can bring the SWR down, as you can see, to practically nothing. That's impressive. That's really quite impressive. Okay, so let's find the Q. The lowest point here is 1.3 to 1, and that's at 3700 or 3750, 3705. So 3705, 705, and let's get it to 2. So 720, so that's 15 kilohertz is the other way fifteen kilohertz so it's exactly the same okay so here's something I want to capture if I can um, and it's the bandwidth of the uh, of the the loop um, if I just take it out of residency you'll see it will go dark and you'll see the direction it's gone I'll bring it back in again and I'll make it go past that point and you can see it disappearing lower in frequency and I'll just bring it back up again bang there we go okay you can see that movement it's amazing Thank <laughs> you. 